Yeah, so I, I grew up in a, a home in, in Wexford, just outside in Niscarty, a place called Came. So that's where I, it all started off. My mother and father were very much involved in it, and my grandparents. So so my, my daddy would have ridden, both my parents would have rode pine points, and uh, then uh, my father would have you know, started off working in the yards around, he worked for uh, PJ Finn and Jim Bulger, and he worked for Aiden a bit. Then he started training himself. and. Uh, Train a few pint of pointers and a few track horses. We wouldn't have big numbers, and we just you know, just enjoys doing that. And um, I would have started, you know, riding out there from a young age with uh, my brother Mark. So that's where it would have started, really. As any young lad, well, for me anyway, like growing up, like everything was was geared towards being a jockey, and everything was geared towards trying to be a, a good rider, and. Uh, you know, uh, Mark and Tomas O'Brien, they were at home and they were older than me and, and they were much better riders than me. And, and Daddy would, would, would have been there always riding ponies and, and young young ponies and stuff and doing that. And um, so look, I was always trying to improve and I was trying to catch up with the two boys because, you know, they were riding the boots off me every day. So we kept working at it, trying to do that and we uh, went from there really, you know. I would have done a bit of pony racing at the start uh, during the summers and, and stuff like that. And then, yeah, when I was in sixth year, I suppose I got my license out when I was in fifth year. I would have ridden a few bumpers for daddy and a few pint of pints when I was in sixth year and, and went on from there. So I took a year uh, gap here instead of home and, and rode out with daddy and rode work for lads in Wexford and, and tipped around that way. And then went to Griffith College the following year. The main aim was, you know, was to have a, a, a backup. You know, it's a, it's, being a jockey is a tough life and not everyone makes a living out of it and you know you need an awful lot of luck and you need an awful lot of good people around you to get to get the chances and uh, so I said you know I you know I, I enjoyed school and uh, history and English were probably my best subjects so journalism probably made sense and I, I always enjoyed kind of writing and I loved reading those articles about jockeys and trainers and stuff so that was kind of the that was it. We decided to do that, and it was just really a backup to, you know, obviously maybe when, I, when I'm done riding, maybe I could do something like that. So you're not going to be a jockey forever, you know. I finished college, and then I, then I rode. I rode out at home, and then I went to Ballydale. Spent a year with Aidan down there, and. Uh, then I went to England and that kind of went to England September, October time over to Nigel Twiston Davis and spent a season there. And uh, you know, I really enjoyed it over there. Uh the great man to work for. Uh, you know, you got in there in the morning, you work good and hard, you work you mucked out six slots before a uh, first slot, uh, Hayden Water and done all that and, and then you rode out, you were out four or five lots and you were to school, there was school on every on um, Monday and Thursday, so they gave me loads of school and they were good that way. And uh, sure, obviously Ryan Hatch, uh, Sam Twist and Davis and all those good lads were there. The main reason was, uh, you know, things, I was going okay point of point and, you know, I was probably average riding, you know, up to 10 winners a year. That was probably my best year. And, uh, you know, struggling a bit, you know, I would have liked to have been doing a bit better. And, you know, was struggling to find the hard to get rides, really. Apart from my father, I wasn't getting much support. And so I was kind of riding away a lot on the track as much as I could. And, you know, you know I wasn't having much success. And I would have followed the English racing quite closely always and noticed that Nigel was quite good to, to young lads, lads starting off. He wasn't just using big names, he seemed to keep it quite in-house, which he still does. So that was the main reason for going to him, really. And uh, I didn't know anything about him, knew he was based near Cheltenham, and knew he was a very good trainer. So I decided then, you know, I thought that was the man to go to, so I was, and I was very happy that I did decide to go to him, really, you know. Oh, he spent his season there, came back in, in May time, and then I, I headed down to Joseph after that. So Joseph was my first cousin, yeah, and uh, 
you know, we'd have spent plenty of time in Ballydyne and, and stuff growing up and Joseph would have come down to us in Wexford a bit, so you know, I always got on quite well with him and, uh, you know, we'd have been riding ponies and, you know, messing around together as young lads, so when Joseph started, I kind of, I came down to him here to ride out when I came back from England, I was just riding out there, kind of, I was, had, had a half in my head maybe to go back to England in September time after the summer and uh, I said tipping around here with Joseph and I had five or six winners over the summer in, in bumpers and hurdle races and stuff so I had a good enough summer and I made the decision then to stay here and uh, you know, look, so I've been here ever since. Yeah, I've been lucky enough. I've Ken Whelan is my agent. He's a good, good, very good agent. Um, you know, I would have known Ken from his riding days. You know, was a, he was a, quite a good rider. Um, and he was a good man in, in a cross country in a banks race, and I always enjoyed watching those those races. And he was he won on Risk of Thunder and those types of horses. So, and he's a nice fella too. Ken is the type of fella that, you know, when you're a young guy in the way room coming up along, I would have actually ridden a bit against Ken, and that like, Ken was. He would have. He did a word for everyone, and he was he was a decent fella. So he rang me up, I heard that I might be turning, and uh, I had no hesitation in going to him really, and he's been good to me. So and then I was lucky that you know that I felt that I was connected to Joseph and riding a little bit for Joseph. You know, probably Joseph was obviously a high profile yard. He's only starting off at the time, but it was a high profile yard, and uh, I was lucky that you know I was able to Joseph. The fact that I was riding for him probably made it easier for Ken to sell me and made it easier for him to get rides off other people then, you know. Yeah, a uh, champagne classic in the Martin Pipe. Yeah, an unbelievable day, an unbelievable day. You know, again, a kind of a chance ride. I uh, was lucky to get it. And, you know, he, he's a very good horse, travelled beautifully, jumped beautifully. He was the winner, like, the winner a long way out that day. And took it up going to the last and just won very well, I'm sure. That's an unbelievable feeling, it's something that you dream about from a very young age and, and something that you uh, probably don't think is ever going to happen. And um, so like, I'm not sure if that was, was in dreamland after that and the, the pulling up all the lads saying well done was unbelievable. And walking back in up that future, it's, uh, it's something that you never get enough of really. And uh, like, so it was brilliant there. Bridges towards the outside. They're on the run up towards the finish. And Tower Bridge on the outside. Tower Bridge now on the stand side of Jets as they hit the line. Tower Bridge and great to, uh, I'm delighted to get the opportunity to ride him. That was my first ever ride in a grade one. And, you know, I'm very grateful that Mr. McManus left me on him. You know, asked it a privilege to wear those colours, you know, they're, they're such famous colours. And, uh, yeah, that was a great day. He, he, we dropped him in that, that day and hunted away and he stayed going very, very well and hit the line well. And, um, you know, he was an outsider that day, but he, he proved since that he's, uh, he's a proper grade one horse. I broke my collarbone quite badly in Galway. I missed 10 weeks. Uh, you know, I, I kind of, the, the previous collarbone injuries I had, I, uh, you know, you made yourself, you get up, you get going and you, you push yourself to get back early. And this one was quite bad and I, and I tried to do the same thing with it and held me up for an extra month, which was, you know, quite stupid at the time. And, uh, you know, you learn, the more injuries you get, I suppose, you, you learn to go along that you have to mind yourself a bit better, but um, that held me up, and we're a bit down on winners this year. But that's the way it goes, you know, we start with a clean sheet in, uh, after Punchestown, and we'll try and, you know, beat the best tie that we've had in the next year, hopefully. It was a good chat in them. Um, the horses all ran very well, Joseph's horses. Us and them was second in the arc, and Tower Bridge was second in the handicap, and early doors won. So Joseph had a great chat in them, and the Band of Outlaws was brilliant in the Fred Winter. A horse that, you know, he was, he'd done everything right all year, and, and you know, really improved from each race, and he was the winner, winner all the way that day too. Jump well, travelled well. And it was only a matter of not getting there too soon, and you know, he even met with a good bit of interference going to the last, and. He done well when they pulled him out. He done well to get going. Like if he was a Midland one, he wouldn't have got back going. That was his race over. But and Band of Outlaws has given Joseph O'Brien a winner at the Cheltenham Festival. Band of Outlaws and JJ Slevin. He showed that he was a very good horse that day. It was his first Cheltenham Festival winner, so it's. Uh, I'm sure he's going to have many, many more. So, you know, it's nice to be able to say that that you're in that you're always first Cheltenham winner.